Greetings, 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 family. It's my show we do. One half of the Acoma House Initiative, culturally based counseling and consulting as we bring you the art and science of black love culture so that you can win at love. We want all of our people to win at love, really begin to understand this art and science. So today I'm coming to you, I won't be long, but I plan to be very strong as I discuss something important. Again, all throughout the summer, we are in the, what we call the heat of love focus in our counseling firm and consulting firm. And what that basically deals with is intimacy and sex, not sex and intimacy, but intimacy and sex, because it is emotional vulnerability and intimate connection that creates a high level of sex and um, sex gratification and fulfillment. So today we're just kicking it and something that I want to talk about, I've been um, talking about a lot lately with a lot of clients is sexual regrets. So I want to ask you some questions. Number one, and you don't have to answer these um, other than to yourself. These are reflective questions. What age did you first begin having sex? That's the first question. Do you have regrets from the first time? Meaning the age that you started, was it too early? Was it too late? The person that you had sex, was it the wrong person? Um, or the style in which you had sex? Was it too rough? Was it to um, freaky, um, as some people say, was it something that is um, like some people started, as they tell me, through group sex and orgies and stuff like that. Um, so do you regret the style, the person or the age? Then also look at how has this, these, these first two questions, affected your sexual maturity? Like how have you evolved sexually and or how has it, you know, played out in your sexual life cycle, right? So um, there is a study that said that 85% of people regret some aspects of their sexual life. In other words, you know, it's a national study in, in, an Amer in the Americas, in the United States of America, and many other people polled, 85% of them regretted some aspects of their um, sex. And it's, it's oftentimes a little bit different for men and women. Um, 20 to 30% of women tend to regret uh, sex happening too young. Um, they typically regret the sex partners that they have chosen a lot of times because um, there wasn't a lot of love or nurturing. And they also tend to regret that the sex was not gratifying. In other words, they were not able to um, reach the fulfillment of their sexual experience because of the way the person had sex with them, etc. right? So, you know, um, they just wasn't feeling the sex, right? Men, on the other hand, studies show like they tend to regret missed sexual opportunities. So they tend to regret um, people who got away, people who they wanted to have sex with and didn't have sex with. Um, they also tended to regret not performing well in sexual um, um, episodes, right? So like they saying, yo, you know, I should have performed better there or with this person or in this experience. And then finally, and most stingingly, men tend to regret, um, studies show that men tend to regret um, the, the byproducts of their sex act in the form of A, venereal diseases, and B, the children that are born. And this is really deep and powerful. So it seems like when we look at the study nationally, women have about um, top three regrets, you know, it happening too soon, who they had sex with, and or they weren't really pleasured. Men tend to regret um, people who got away. They also tend to regret uh, 
you know, um, um, low performance on themselves by, by themselves, and they tend to regret the byproducts of the sex act in the form of children and or um, venereal diseases. So this is important to understand because the bottom line is we both have regrets, right? Um, and so why is it that we have regrets? That's that's part of what I want to discuss and what comes out of sexual regrets. Like what what is born out of it? So um, neurosis is when we have an obsession or a negative impact, emotional impact on our own behavior, right? And so what we're seeing is a lot of people have anxiety and apprehension about conversations about sex and about sexual personality styles and the way we connect, right? So we, because of our conditioning, we have challenges around even just having conversations with sex. And one of the things that I think is really interesting that me and Nawasha see a lot is that even, and we even see this in married couples who, who have, um, you know, long-term or, or they're beyond the first seven years, which is a big gap for most people to get beyond that first seven years of togetherness, right? People are actually having sex but they don't have a lot of conversations about the sex that they're having. And I think that that's really interesting. And it's telling about something that we have a general anxiety in terms of how we even emote or discuss our sexual lives and not being able to say everything we're thinking or feeling about sex is one of the greatest things that um, produce re like regret right? So we see that there is excessive worry or guilt. Um, there's worry or guilt about performance. There's worry or guilt about, you know, who we've had sex with and our own moral ethical standards, like what we believe versus what we are doing and is what we believe measuring up to what we're doing. If it is not, a lot of times we either feel guilt or resentment. So we, we, we blame ourselves um, a lot of times as, as women. Um, we blame others a lot of times as um, women. We blame ourselves a lot of time as men. And we blame others a lot of time as men. Now, I want to say here at the outstart, um, people molesting people is not sex, right? So if you are a person who was molested in your youth, like I was, that's, that's not sex, right? So that's not, that's not the spiritual energy exchange that we call sex. Um, sex is a voluntary spiritual energy exchange. It's not, you know, somebody took advantage of you when you were four or six. That's not us. Even though there was violations to your genitals or things like that, that's not sex. So I'm not talking about any of that. That's a whole nother discussion that we talk about in um, surpassing sexual trauma. But in this instance, I'm talking about two consensual adults actually agreeing to have sex. But a lot of times what we find is that there is some um, succumbing to pressure, right? Whether the pressure is from the man or the woman, um, sometimes we're having sex with a person that we don't actually want to have sex with. In this national study that I read um, a couple of years back, it really talked about 85%. 85% of most adults regretted a high percentage of their sexual partner list. So I'm not talking about the number. I don't want to know your number, right? Your body count. But if we look at that body count, and we look at where you are today in your emotional maturity, your spiritual positioning. What is the percentage of the people that you regret? Well, I can say for me, it's probably about 99%. Um, I, I definitely have a lot of regret. And if the world were perfect, I would have been a virgin moving into the relationship with my wife, right? Um, and if I were fully prepared, fully educated, fully balanced around my whole sexual identity, 
I would have done that. But in that comes our social conditioning. Cause like, yo, you know, for us, a lot of times I know speaking for on behalf of some of the men, you know, our whole validity and value is based on our sexual conquest. So in man culture, you, 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 you know, especially in this Western world where a lot of our sensibilities are warped, we like you only a man. If you got physical conquest, material conquest, or sexual conquest. So if you don't got one of them three in this context of what this culture is defining manhood, you can't even call yourself a man because you got to have either a lot of women, a lot of women, a lot of material possessions, or you have to have a lot of strength and power to be able to impose your will on other men. Every man who is uh, valuable or uh, quality in this context this is not our cultural way, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, but everybody who's a man has that. Now, in for women, it really is a lot of times your sexual validity is your beauty, right? And so um, many women do things to themselves that they regret, but also, too, the women who are the most beautiful are oftentimes the most coveted. And I think all women get coveted for sex at some point in their life, but a lot of the regret is coming from, again, as I said, who's the people that you had sex with, how much and often you had sex with, if you were promiscuous at a phase of your life, and if you are now, and, you know, like, you know, the style of the sex, et cetera. You know, some people have been exposed to some really wild stuff out here. You know, it's a lot of freakish stuff, and... If the wrong person catches you at the right time, you could be introduced to something from the beginning. And part of the problem that we see, along with the anxiety, the apprehension, the excessive worry and guilt, the depression and resentment, right? This depression is when you're angry at yourself. I, you know, as a clinical therapist, I, I try to tell people this often. People tell me they're on meds for depression and stuff like that. And I ask them, do you know what depression is? And oftentimes they say, no, it's just feelings of I can't get, you know, da -da -da -da, I can't, I can't get, um, can't be myself or come to myself. Well, generally what depression is, is self anger. And you're angry with yourself about something, right? that you feel you should be able to do or that you should know how to do. When you don't have that information, you get angry at yourself. Now, if you're angry at me, you could project that anger in very um, um, measurable ways. A lot of times when we're angry at ourselves, we don't know how to project that. And so the anger is turned inward. And what we see as depression is the result of the self anger right so you got to understand that so people are feeling depression because of their their sexual um behavior they're also feeling resentment a lot of people feel they may be pressured into sex they may be tricked into sex or they were asked to do things sexually that are against their beliefs so whether that's their wife their husband whomever they have resentment sometimes even in the relationships that they're in and these conversations are not had. So that is um, another effect of uh, sexual regrets. We also have low self-esteem and low consciousness about ourselves and our awareness in how we promote ourselves. Now we live in a society in North America where sex is promoted to sell everything from candy bars to food, to cars, to all kinds of things. And as I said, for women especially, your value is connected to your sexual appeal. How attractive you are becomes how valuable you are in this society. That is not correct. It is not actual, actual fact, but it is the way this society moves. So this is why a lot of times little girls and older women don't even get noticed in this society. It is the women who are in their sexual primes or attractiveness of a 40-year window from like or I'll say a 50 year window from like 15 to um, 65, you know, um, are women over 65 
beautiful? Absolutely. And sexually attractive? Absolutely. Are children under 15 appropriate to be looking at sexually? Absolutely not. Um, children 15, women, girls who are 15 are only appropriate to, you know, boys who are probably 17 on down. In fact, legally, if you 18, leave a 15 year alone, right? So, but these are some of the dynamics that happen. The anxiety, the apprehension, the excessive worry, the guilt, the depression, low self-esteem, low consciousness, and poor stress response, right? Because sex brings on a um, trigger and response pattern, right? And if your trigger and response pattern gets poor, this becomes the, um, the thing that really produces a lot of regret because one of the things is studies have shown despite what you believe oftentimes what happened is what becomes a normative pattern for you like what becomes the way you get down sexually is the way it started for you so think about that what is the difference between the way you started having sex and the way you and you have sex now for most people there isn't a lot of difference you've either evolved and matured into that in initial style or you devolved down from that initial style but that style for most of us is still guiding the way we have sex right it's still guiding the style that we have sex in so really think about that and how you see that play out in your life because a lot of times we're associating, um, you know, pleasure responses to sex a lot of the times, whether the pleasure is physical um, tintillation and satisfaction, or there is a pleasure of social status. So you're able to advance, you're able to have a um, persuasive power over a person because you're having sex with them or someone they know that is also important to them. So it's a secondary, um, it's a secondary thing that you that you gain power from. So lastly, you know, I, I would say that another thing that is a correlation a lot of people don't get, our predisposition to violence really is connected to our sexual um, our sexual styling, specifically the way we had sex, etc what turns us on and this is very um this is very important in a cautionary tale for those of us that are in porn and other things that are have these um, um stimulus addictions because you know when you look at porn and a, a lot of the way it is it's not beautiful it's not loving it's not careful you know not not to say that there's anything wrong with force power and intention but it's actually usually when you know when you weigh it on a scale of support love nurturing and abuse neglect and um misuse you will see that it leans it, it leans uh, more to the out to the second than to the latter than it does to the former right so when you see I, I i was addicted before so i've watched a lot of porn and i've seen you know like men and women but more women than men getting trashed in porn right they're, they're they're having experiences that are not really loving and now interestingly when we talk about men and one of their major regrets in sex is their performance a lot of the reasons why is because men have this internal subconscious belief that they should perform like porn stars and that's really deep because if the porn star is performing in such a way where there's an abuse, neglect, and almost a violent predisposition, he's actually regretful that he can't do that. You know what I mean? And so we see this in our in our thinking, we see this in our speech, and we see this in our behavior where this this preoccupation for destroying the P, the Punani, or killing it, or all of these violent terms. But interestingly enough, um, our beloved Dr. Stacey Patton in, in her um, uh, uh, exceptional book called um, Spare the Child, Why, Why Spanking um, Children Won't Save Black America. 
she does a whole psychoanalysis and social analysis on the history of spanking and how we learned that during slavery, that is not our way. And many of the comedians and all of the people of a certain generation believe that they're better off from getting their ass whooped. That's really crazy because we don't know of another constructive discipline. So we're saying, oh, I'm, I, I behave because I got my ass whooped. But then we complain if the police whoop your ass. So which one is it? Do you, do you act better if somebody whoop your ass or you don't? Or is it just that you think if your parents who loved you or your grandparents who loved you whooped your ass, you're better? But at any point, what she shows is there is a direct correlation between making, between um, physically corporal punishment and beating, uh, beating pubescent, prepubescent children and their proclivity to be promiscuous. There is a direct correlation to all of that physical violence and what is going to make a child promiscuous as they hit puberty. And on the other side, I'm contending a lot of studies are showing if you are promiscuous and you are um, introduced to um, a lot of violence, when you become sexual, there is a subconscious correlation of uniqueness and physical contact. In other words, fighting a person that you say you love and fighting them during sex becomes linked. So if I love you, it's okay for me to trash you, throw you around, smack you, push you down, et cetera, et cetera. And so there is a psychodynamic that creates regret from that style of abuse. And the, a part of the psychodynamics of confusion is this. It's abusive and it also feels good. So this becomes an internal conflict. But that lends to a larger, um, um, a, a larger issue where we're using sex to supplement or to supplant things that we didn't get in our development. And this is like, this is the clinical therapist and me talking for real. This is like the core of it, y'all. So the seven human needs that we strive to get in our psychological development and that we need, they're needs, they're not wants, something that we will want to have. They're something we need like air. One of them is connection. One of them is significance. And one of them is certainty, that feeling of comfort, peace of mind, um, ease, whatever. This is why we call certain foods comfort foods, right? A lot of us can only get that need met from food and sex and sport and play. Those become the three ways that we get that need met on a regular basis. And because that becomes the way that we get those needs met, we develop addictions to improper bonding. So what happens in sex is the person we have sex with, the multiple people we have sex with, or the style in which we have sex becomes our psychological bonding mechanism. And even if we are switching partners, we typically, um, we, we're having a lot of partners, we typically tend to bond with things that mirror the way we usually bond. To put it bluntly, we chasing the original high, right? So I'm not saying the original time you had sex, it was a high, but the first time you had sex and there became a high, that is typically the way you're looking to have sex. That is typically the way, the thing you value the most, right? And that is typically the thing that you bond to sexually, whether it's in your best interest or not. Now, if it is not in your best interest, what we're seeing across the board is that it becomes the genesis of sexual regrets. And so, again, it is a thing that brings you pleasure, but a thing that is against what you say you're about or a way that you deal. And so this becomes the psychodynamic sphere or will that we get ourselves caught up in. And so thus becomes the seed of a lot of the regrets we have. So this is the thought, and this is the questions. How do you, um, how do you, you know, 
explain your sexual um, positioning? How do you uh, descri d d d describe your sexual regrets? What in your life have you been regretful about? Is it that you started too young? Is it that you started too late? Is it that you had too much sex? Is it that you feel like you didn't have enough sex? What I'm asking for is what is your beliefs around this thing? That's something you really need to think about. And that's something that you need to be in ongoing conversations with, um, with someone that you're having sex with. If it's your partner, this is, and what I mean ongoing conversations, I'm talking about, this is a conversation you're having throughout the years of your life cycle development, not a conversation we had one time, or we talked about that a lot when we first got together. Not that. I'm talking about how it's playing out in the last time we had sex. How, what are you thinking about before the next time we have sex? That kind of a thing, because those are some of the ways that we can, in general, um, curb some of the sex regret because ultimately anything we regret, we want to be able to deal with it properly. Right? So we're offering some solutions, right? So one of the things we're offering, if you work with us is elemental cleansing. So you're going to use the elements of earth, air, fire, and water to ground yourself around moral ethical things to elevate yourself in an airy way, in a visionary way to cleanse through um, water therapy and, and some ritual techniques, but then to also um, cleanse yourself in terms of beliefs. And then definitely through fire exercises and things of that nature to purify, right? So elemental cleansing is one thing. Having um, 360 degrees of talk therapy to really talk through all the, the, the psychodynamics of the bio cycle and social impact of your sexual regrets. We got to be able to do that. And then we got to make that a normative thing. And then you got to have um, a third thing is uh, repatriation or repar reparation um, contributions. In other words, one of the ways you can assuage any um, regret or guilt is to pay forward the new lessons you've learned. So that is working with youth programs. That is having um, conversations with your children. Because one of the things I think is interesting that we see is a lot of people say that they have regret about not being taught properly from their parents. Now, that's whether their parents are were united or separated. That's whether their parents were responsible or irresponsible, so they believe. But what's interesting about that, a lot of times when they actually have children, they take on the same exact patterns that their children had. So there's many children that we work with. Parents are in the home together, both of the parents, and both children say they're in the puberty years from like 11, 12 on up to 18. And they say the parents ain't really talking to them about sex. Their parents are talking to them about preventative measures like don't get a disease or don't get pregnant. But that's not actually talking about sex. We have to actually normalize talking about the sex act, the emotions, the psychology that go around it, because to not do that is setting your children up to have regrets. And so a lot of times we will think that we're doing something different than our parents because the circumstances look different. But statistics show that like 90% of us do the same things. If your parents ain't talk to you about sex, you don't talk to your children about sex. If your parents use scare tactics to talk to you about sex, you using preventative scare tactics, don't get pregnant, here's the diseases, da -da 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 -da. We're not showing our children the emotional love. We're not um, mapping with our children the, um, the biological dynamics that's happening as we enter into puberty around 11 to 13 for most girls and around 12 to 14 for most boys. We're not really talking to them about the dynamics of why they're feeling so much lust and why they want to um, express themselves sexually and masturbation and the concerns about it and all other things. We just like disease and pregnancy. That's sex talk. 
And that's not enough because it's from that that a lot of people start to develop a misunderstanding or an incomplete um, understanding, I should say. And then regrets start happening a lot of times before they even have sex. Because one of the things people statistically show is I wish that I had, I regret not knowing more about the sex act, about how to um, present myself and how to connect with some person during sex before I actually had it for the first time. So the regret can start before you even happen. And, and all of these things are the composite of when you don't have your culture in place. Because when you have your culture in place, you're actually getting proper education around intimacy and sex. And this is why for us at the Acoma House Initiative, everything comes back to um, competent, um, having cultural competency from your nature, developing that group value system that comes from your natural being as a black man and black woman. This is why everybody else in the world uses their culture to learn everything. And black people think that you got to make things up by yourself. So they run around saying it's not like this stuff comes with a handbook. We've been here for trillions of years. We got unlimited handbooks, but we don't have our culture, so we don't know them anymore. So this is the conversation. What do you regret? Are you feeling regrets now? Are you overwhelmed with regrets? And if you are, please reach out to us. And we'll put a link here for you to do a free soulmate strategy session so we can really talk about the regrets and give you these um, some of these concepts that we're talking about, elemental cleans and talk therapy and reparation contributions. If you start to employ those, the regrets will lessen. Now you can't change the past, but you can change how the past affects you, what it means to you. You can change the meaning of your past. And you need to do that if you're gonna develop a healthy sexual relationship moving forward. So this is the conversation about sex regrets. What is it that you regret? Is it the age that you started? Is it the number of people you had sex with? Is it the style that you had sex with? Is it the fact that you didn't have enough um, education and preparation? Who do you think was responsible for your preparation? And how are you rebalancing that? If it was your parents, are you as an adult talking to your parents now? If you're in a committed relationship, what are some of your regrets? Is it about performance? Is it about the inability to be emotionally vulnerable? Because what we're saying in the heat of love is that it's the emotional vulnerability that creates the intimacy. So if you don't have a high level of emotional vulnerability, you don't have a high level of sex. I don't care what kind of tricks you know and how much you could pump on somebody or whatever. That's not what creates intense emotional sex, right, as adults. And so some of us are so damaged because of sexual molestation or whatever kind of perversion pornography, we think sex is an acrobatic act and not an emotional, psychological, and biological connection, right? And so we don't really grow from the act. We're more or less using somebody else as a secondary masturbation tool. Um, instead of masturbating with my hand, I'm going to use you to masturbate. But when we look at are we elevating or the children we create, not just the biological children, but the spiritual um, mental children that we create when we have sex, those things that continue to move on um, in the invisible part of ourselves, that's actually a child, right? It's something that two people came together and created. That, that thought sequence or that emotional response. And so that thing begins to grow and change and impact our lives the same way a physical child would in the material world. So we got a, a new class coming out called No More STDs in the Black Love School. And the STD stands for spiritually transmitted disease, not just sexually transmitted disease. So this is the question on the floor as we deal with sexual regrets. What are your regrets? How have you managed to overcome those regrets? And what are you doing to rebalance and pay forward that information so that more people don't have regrets? Um, that's the question. If you want help um, this, this season in the Black Love School, we are in the season of, 
of The Heat of Love, where all the classes and conversations are about intimacy and sex, intimacy and sex, intimacy and sex, not sex and intimacy. Everybody could talk about that sex stuff, but very few of us could talk for about 10 minutes straight on how to create intimacy and how to build a strong intimate bond so that you can have amazing sex, um, gratifying sex, uh, it, especially those of us that are in relationships. The single people oftentimes are the most delusional because they can, there's no real measurement, trajectory measurement. Like, you know, I'm not even sexually active with the same person or with a person long enough to really measure over a longitudinal study. So it's all about latitude. How high was it? How good was it? And then I'm out. But when you're in a long-term relationship, it's more um, holistic because you're measuring latitude, but you're also measuring longitude over a, sp over a period of time. And when you do that, if you don't have intimacy, the sexual experiences you're having are trash. And unfortunately for most of us, We've been having sexual trash so much our life. We don't even care. We like, if this trash, I'm good with it because this is all I need. Not realizing that there's a whole nother level that we could be experiencing. And actually, statistics show the more fulfilling sex becomes, the more holistically, emotionally, psychologically, sociologically, and biologically it becomes, the actual less sex we're having. But it's just like food. If you get really good nutrition, you don't feel the need to eat all the time. But if you eat a bunch of junk and it and it strips from your body and doesn't give your body cells, you are always hungry. So join us in the Black Love School for this semester, The Heat of Love. We got two new classes. We started last Friday with the Seven Senses of Sex. We're going to be showing ritual love making. We're going to be doing sex talk, sex diets, and the two new classes, um, the promiscuity paradox and no more STDs. If you want um, the deepest and most profound work, you want to join a coma soul. And soul stands for self and others understanding love systems, right? And, then, and that includes sexual systems. That's our premier program, 10-week program, where we're teaching you the top seven skills. And one of those skills is intimacy, how to build intimacy and in sex. So we're offering these um, sadakas, these offerings for you so that you can grow and build in your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in the art and science of black love, um, love culture so that you can win at the intimate relationship. Stop winging it. Stop trying to um, convince yourself that you're doing so great because you're not doing as bad as others. You never want to compare yourself to the worst of the worst, which is what we mostly do. Yeah, how you doing? Oh, we doing great. How do you know? Because we ain't fighting. We ain't killing each other. We ain't whatever. That's the worst of the worst. Compare yourself to the best of the best, and we will all see that we're not doing as well as we think we are. So that's my love. That's my offering on sexual regrets. Please comment, like, and share if you feel that it has any um, value to yourself or someone that you that you love so that you can um, spark conversation. If you're in a couple and, and only one of you is seeing this right now, definitely share this with your partner and say, hey, what do you think about this? What are some conversations that we need to have around our sexual regrets and our history? Because the reality is, most of us have sexual regrets because in a broken culture, you're not going to have the proper education that you need. And when you don't have the proper education that you need, you are usually entering into sex, either in terms of frequency, um, um, debut, what we what they call in psychology, losing your virginity, your sexual debut, the people or persons that you're having sex with or the style of what you're having sex with, or your ability to talk before, during, and after sex in a way that brings the two people closest together and manifests the two reasons that anybody should be having sex. Mind expansion, total spiritual expansion, and the procreation of life. So that's what we're offering. If you want any of these helps, please 
click the links below, get a free consultation, look at the Black Love School, which is an international membership of singles and couples from around the world, or work with Acoma Soul, the intensive 10-week program that's going to teach you the seven main skills to have the intimate relationship of your wildest dream. And one of them is understanding fully 360 degrees, inner, outer, under, and overstanding of intimacy and sex. I'm your brother, Mon We Do, greeting you in the eternal words of the art and science of black love culture so you can win at love and have the most amazing sex on the planet that is built by the greatest intimacy on the planet within your nature and within your culture. As always, looking forward to talking to you soon. Until that time, Nia Akoma, take heart.